Hello and welcome to my channel. I'm Angela Brennan and today I'm bringing you Spellbinders Clear Stamp and Die of the Month, October 2024, Holiday Besties. This 4 by 5 and 3 quarter inch stamp set comes with 4 sentiments and 4 characters, a bear, bunny, penguin and snowman. It also comes with coordinating dies. I think stamps that come with coordinating dies is so handy. Though the characters, which is the bear and the bunny and the snowman and the penguin, they stamp together, but you can die cut them separately. And that's really, really handy. Because when I do these characters, I like to die cut them a few times so you can add a little bit of depth and to give it a little bit of dimension. I start off by stamping all four characters onto an expressive blending card, which is a Copic friendly card. And I'm going to be using my Misty to do it. I'm of course going to use a Copic friendly ink as well. And this is the Memento Tuxedo Black ink. I find using a Copic friendly ink really helps because this means when you use your Copic markers, the ink will not bleed. Alternatively, if you don't have a Copic friendly ink, you can also use a pigment ink and make sure you sprinkle some clear embossing powder on it and emboss it so the ink will not run. I do show you lots of the colors, Copic colors that I use to do my coloring. This is because I have specific sets of Copic colors that I use to do coloring and because they, I have it in sets of three to four colors for each color family and I tend to use the same colors all the time. So if you've been watching my videos for a little while, whenever I use Copics, you will see I do have probably two sets of greens, two or three sets of greens, a, few, a couple of sets of pinks and reds. I don't have all the Copic colors. You don't need all of them. When you buy your Copic colors, if you buy it by set A, B, it comes with a whole load of Copic markers, but they don't necessarily go together. So if you're thinking of getting into Copics, I would suggest look at the color families, buy it by color families. So say this month you're going to buy blue, buy just those four, three to four markers that's going to go together. And then over the time, be able to get a good Copic marker collection and do buy the refills that come with it as well. Because when you're doing blending, you tend to use quite a lot of the marker and you get good results that way. I think this is a good way to get a Copic collection. This is how I did it. I didn't buy a whole set because I did some research and so if you buy a whole set, it doesn't necessarily get the right blending colors. A little while ago, I did a video on Copics. Basically all I knew about Copics, I think it was a couple of years ago. I look up a link to that video and I'll put it in the description below so you can have a look at it because it shows you how I store my Copic markers, uh, my Stopic, Copic refills as well as the color combos that I use in various videos that I have uh, where I use Copics. So do check it out if you're interested in getting into Copics. Now Copics is obviously not the only way to color this. You can easily use watercolors or even color pencils, whichever medium you choose to color these beautiful images. Just ensure that you use the right card as well as the right ink to stamp the images. It makes a whole load of difference because it gets you better results. So for example, water coloring, you would use watercolor paper and as its name suggests, it be able to withstand a whole load of water as you add the pigment from the watercolor paints. And if you're using color pencils, you'd use the right texture. So color pencils, if you've got a slightly rougher texture, you get better results. Copic friendly cards, as you probably notice, it's really smooth and that allows for really beautiful blending. So the card needs to be able to take in, get the colors saturated into the card as well, be nice and smooth. So as you use the right card with the right ink for the right medium, you will get much better results. Or not color it. I do show you a card later on in this video for those of you who are not so keen on coloring, either because you're not so confident in it yet, it took me a little while to get confident in coloring these images, especially with Copics, or if you don't have the time. So I do have a card that I make that doesn't require any coloring, but just a little bit of stamping and heat embossing. I really hope you find this video useful and informative. If you do, please give it a thumbs up and do consider subscribing so that when you do subscribe, 
you're notified when new videos are uploaded. I do lots of Spellbinders videos. In fact, I will be doing Spellbinders Kits videos right up to next year. So Spellbinders has asked me to continue with these videos into 2025 as well. So every month I'll release a few videos on the various Spellbinders monthly club kits. And when I'm done with it, I will collate or compile all of those videos into one playlist. I've colored the images, used the coordinating die to die cut it, and now I'm using some stickles to add a little bit of what snow-like glitter glue on some parts of the colored images. You just leave it aside to dry so that you don't smudge it. Here I'm using four different colored cards and I'm going to stamp the images individually onto these colored cards with Versamark, that's clear embossing ink, and I'm going to sprinkle some white embossing powder. This is super fine white embossing powder. And then I will die cut the images individually. Because the embossing powder is super fine, I always start heating it in the back of the card first. So the embossing powder kind of attaches itself to the card. And then I melt the embossing powder on the front. And here I've got all the four different colors that I have stamped, embossed and die cut. And now I'm adding the same frosted lace, stickles, glitter glue to give it a little bit of a snowy, furry look. I'm going to keep it aside to let it dry. To be on the safe side, I do leave it aside for at least an hour to dry so I don't smudge it. In the meantime, what I've done is I've die cut four of these different colors on using my notched corner frames die set so that I can interchange the colors and put it all onto one card front. And for the sentiment, I'm going to use the sentiment from the clear stamp of the month. It's a tiny cute sentiment that says, Sweet Winter Wishes. I like to stamp sentiments using my mini misty and because I'm going to do some heat embossing, I'm going to use some anti-static powder and I stamp the image or the sentiment with my VersaKline medieval blue ink. I can make sure it stamps beautifully and then I sprinkle it with some clear embossing powder. You don't have to do this but I like to do this because this is a pigment ink and if I die cut it without the ink drying properly, it will smudge and then I just melt that embossing powder with the heat tool. And now I can use the smallest notched corner frames die. It comes, it's a set that's got many sizes and I'm just putting it through my tiny die cutting machine and there you go. I die cut a few layers because I wanted to give it some dimension and I'm just going to put it in the middle of the images. The stickles that I applied onto these die cut images have not quite dried yet, which is why I'm quite careful with it. I'm just trying to organize the whole card so that I can put it together once it dries. So I've just got all of the die cutting done. And now that it's dried, I'm going to show you how I make sure it is right in the middle. And I use a T ruler to do that. So I make sure that the space at the top and at the bottom of the card base is the same. And I'm guided by the lines on my T ruler. And then I can start putting it together. Once you've done your first one, first rectangle, then the rest of it, you can use it, use that as a guide to attach the rest of it. And I cannot tell you how useful this T ruler is when I want to attach elements, be it sentiments or rectangles like this onto my card front. It makes a huge difference. It does take away a lot of the guesswork and it doesn't spoil your card towards the end of the assembly. Now I'm just going to pop these little images with uh, some dimension tape and put it onto the front of the card. So it's one of those cards that are really easy to put together. It's clean and it also means that it can done quite quickly. Now all of the stickles and all of these images have just dried so I'm going to start assembling them. And this card is finally the assembly is complete. For the images that I colored with Copics earlier and in die cut, I also added some crystal drops. For the buttons of the snowman, I used the ebony black Nouveau crystal drop. I like these drops because they dry with a little bit of dimension and I use the morning dew for the rosy cheeks. I just added a little bit to give it a bit of a shine on each of those images there and I let them to dry. It's about the same drying time as the stickles. Now I'm going to do some assembly now. I use the landscape dies from the Spellbinders large die of the month from September 2024 which is last month and I die cut some card 
just to give it a little bit of landscaping because I'm going to put a few layers and I'm stamping the sentiment again from the clear stamp of the month directly onto the front of the card. You can die cut these sentiments, but sometimes it's nicer to just stamp it directly onto the card front. And this is one of the layers of that landscape. So I've stamped it with clear embossing powder, sprinkling it with some super fine white embossing powder. As you can see, this is my go-to. I've got two embossing powders that I use a lot. It's either the white embossing powder or the clear embossing powder. And I'm removing some of the stray embossing powder with a dry paint brush so that when I melt the embossing powder, it melts beautifully. I use a peg, a wooden peg, when I do my heat embossing, that's to melt the embossing powder so I don't burn my fingers because you can see the sentiment come right up to the end of the card. So here are a few layers of blues, few different colors of blues, which I have decided to put as part of the landscaping to assemble these little images. I have attached them with cello tape so that that's the distance I want from each of those landscape die cuts. And then I'm going to mark it on the card front just underneath the last landscape so that I can do some ink blending. I'm using four different hues of blue here just to do some really light ink blending to give the background a little bit of a sky color. So I'm not doing any heavy handed ink blending here, just some really light colors and I'm putting these different colors to show some differentiation in the color in the sky in the horizon. I don't want the ink blended background to detract from the card focus of the card, which is the small images that I've taken lots of effort to color and die cut. So I'm going to keep it quite light. Before I do the assembly, I'm going to use some splatter white opaque watercolor to splatter some white in the background. And I do keep that in this little container here because even when it dries, I can reactivate the splatter white opaque watercolor by spritzing some water into it so there's nothing wasted. I reactivate it with some water. Once it's ready, the right consistency I want, I'm going to splatter it onto the card front and I use a splat box to protect my craft surface so it doesn't go all over. The consistency of the splatter white will dictate how big the splatters are. If you want it quite small, make sure you keep it quite thick and if it gets a little bit watery, the blobs get bigger. And I leave it aside to dry for a little while. It doesn't take long to dry. There's quite a few layers here, so I've added some strips of card to get it all flat and nice so it's easy to attach it to the card front. And I'm just using some double-sided tape to attach it to the card front. As usual, it's slightly bigger, so it's nice and easy for me to put it onto the card front and then just use the scissors to cut off the excess so it's nice and flush on the bottom part of the card front. You don't have to do these landscapes to uh, assemble this card. I just wanted to put a little bit of uh, like what I think is like snow landscapes to attach these small images. If you don't have that or you don't want to do that, you can just attach the images directly onto the card front with the sentiment and that's good enough. And if you don't have the die cards to the landscape, you can just draw something, a curve onto a card and just cut it and put it onto the card. It's easy enough to do. I've got some dimension tape of the top of the image and just glue at the bottom again because of the difference of the height of the various cards and I like it to be flat onto the card front. And there you have it, pretty much done, this card. I also add a sentiment from the Better Press of the Month club kit, Joyeux Noël, which is Joyful Christmas. In France, they tend to say Joyful Christmas rather than Merry Christmas and this is Joyeux Noël. These are sentiments that I have hot foiled from Better Press of the Month and I am going to place that onto the card front. The Better Press of the Month comes with these sentiments and also with the coordinating die. So if you do it in advance, you'll have these sentiments available to put on card fronts as you assemble your cards. For the next card, I'm going to do some ink blending. First, before I do any ink blending, I'm going to stamp a sentiment onto the card front itself. So there's the card panel that I'll put in the card front. I'm stamping it with some clear embossing powder and I'm going to sprinkle it with super fine white embossing powder and melt that embossing powder with a heat tool. Now you can't see much with white on white 
you can just see the image barely there because it's shiny. And then I'm going to make that image visible by doing some ink blending. So this card is my Strathmore Bristol Smooth Series card, which is ideal for ink blending. I'm using just two colors here, the Distressed Inks Chipped Sapphire, as well as the Faded Jeans. This is called the Embossed Resist Technique. So essentially, it says what's on the tin, really. It resists the ink, resists the areas that are embossed, therefore making that embossed image, in this case, the embossed sentiment visible. Then I'm going to put the card panel in the embossing folder of the month after spritzing it with some water on the back just to soften the fibers to prevent any cracking. And I'm going to let it dry by putting a heavy object on it so it dries straight. I go on to add a little bit more of the same colors after embossing it really lightly. I don't want to flatten the image, but I'm just adding it onto that raised bit here, just a little bit darker, the same color, chipped sapphire and faded jeans over those embossed images. And then before I finish off, I take a dry cloth and wipe that embossed image so all that ink that lies on it will be wiped off and you get a nice clear white sentiment that is easily legible. Before I attach it to the A6 card front, I decide to use the same distress ink colors and do some splatters. And then I attach it to the card front with some double-sided tape. This A6 card measures 14.8 centimeters by 10 and a half centimeters. And now it's time to add all of those cute colored and die cut images with some dimensional tape onto the card front. I decide to use all four images and just put them in a row. And you've got that color at the bottom there acting like a bit of a base. So they're not floating on the card. And it's pretty cute. I think I like the way this card turned out. The clear stamp of the month sentiments that I've used on the card front can easily be used as a sentiment for the inside greeting of the card as well. So you can use all the better press sentiments with, on the front and use the clear stamp of the month sentiments in the inside of the card. But I decide to use both of it on the card front. Why not? So that I've got more space inside to write my message to whoever I'm sending the card to. Do let me know in the comments below what do you think of these cards. I've tried to do quite a few different cards. All of my cards are slightly different and I'd like to get some commentary on which cards you think are the best. The next card I'm going to do is going to show you some mirror stamping. In the small die of the month video for this month, I showed you some mirror die cutting. Here I'm going to show you some mirror stamping. To do mirror stamping, you need a non-porous surface with a little bit of resistance. And I find this waffle flower mixed media mat or water media mat, they call it, is ideal for this. You can't do it on a non-porous surface like glass or plastic. It slips. It doesn't transfer the ink very well. So I've got a mirror stamp of the snowman here. And then I'm going to do a direct stamp of the snowman. So I've got the snowman facing both directions. And it's ideal to create a card composition with these two. And a bit, I'm going to show you how I die cut it. How do you die cut a mirror stamped image that is not symmetrical? Hang on. So this is the normal die cut. Then I'm going to use the die cut bit on the back of the image. I've obviously stamped it on both sides. But if you put it towards the light, you can see the image there, the outline of the mirror stamped image. Then you tape it onto the card and then you put your die. You can just almost slot the die in into that space and die cut it. I'm using Copic Friendly card here, so it's not very thick. I did it on Copic Friendly card because I knew I was going to use Copic markers to color the image. And here you got a perfectly die cut mirror stamped image, which is not symmetrical. Again, I'm going to add my Stickles Frosted Lace Glitter Glue. A bit addicted to it. I don't take out my stickles very often, but when I do, I tend to put it on everything. So you will see it on almost all the images here. And I've got my Nuo Crystal Drop Morning Dew for the little rosy cheeks. Now, sometimes they can stick a bit. So put it onto a scrap piece of paper to make sure they flow well before you put it onto the image that you want to apply it to. And I'm going to use the Nuo Crystal Drop Ebony Black for the buttons of the snowmans. I like it because it when it dries, there's a little bit of dimension to the dry. It's almost like tiny mini buttons on it. And I think it's really cute. Leave it aside for an hour or so to dry 
before you assemble the card. While it's drying, I'm going to prepare the card base. I've already stamped the sentiment. And now for the background, I put it through the embossing border. And I'm going to use a really old stencil called Star Bright. Firstly, before I do any stenciling, I did some ink blending just above where the landscape would fall onto the card front. And I'm stenciling these little stars with some tumbled glass distress ink. I want a really light color. But then when I put the light color, I decide to use the Nouveau Glimmer Paste Moonstone. But what this does, it takes on the color that's underneath it. So you will, while I'm putting the Glimmer Paste on as a white Glimmer Paste, it'll take on the color that I ink blended, which is the tumble glass color underneath those stars. And it look nice and pretty. So it dries with a little bit of dimension and shine. Now this needs to be left aside to dry as well. Remember to wash your stencil or at least soak it in some warm water or soapy water so that the glimmer paste does not dry on the stencil and ruin the stencil. I want a black sentiment from the Better Press for the month but instead of hot foiling it, I'm going to letter press it. So I'm using the Better Press machine to do the sentiments here. Now first I'm going to show you two inks. For the first time I'm going to use the Alter New Pikmin ink. And I'm going to put it through my Platinum 6 embossing or die cutting machine. So you put the entire better press letter press system into it. Easy to do. And you get quite a dark image and it's a slightly smudged because it's a pigment ink. Next, I'm going to do it with the better press black ink. I do want you to see the difference in the two images. So you've got the alter new obsidian pigment ink at the top and the spellbinders better press black ink at the bottom slightly different look one is slightly thicker i decide to use the better press ink that i've done the second one and die cut it with the coordinating die that comes with the better press of the month and i'm going to use one of those sentiments to the card front once all of the elements dry i like having all my sentiments ready to use I'm not very patient, so it's almost dry. I'm just helping it along by, by drying it with the heat tool. I'm heating it or using it to dry it with lower setting of the heat tool. And now that it's dry, and I'm going to back it up with some foam sheet before I attach it to the front of the card base. Therefore, there's a little bit of a dimension as well as the card is nice and dry with the embossing as well as the glimmer paste. It's slightly curved. So I decide to put the foam sheet behind so it's nice and straight. Cut off the slight access that sticks out from the card base and I put on the curved or the landscaped piece of card with a sentiment with some dimensional tape and then I go on to place the two snowmen on either side of that landscape. Nice and easy. I initially forget to add the sentiment from the better press after doing the die cutting, I forget to add it, but I do add it in the end. And I do add the sentiment from the better press of the month as well. So again, simple assembly, but just a few different techniques I've used. And I do like the simplicity of how it, lo it looks on the front of the card. I decide to do some splatters again, <laughs> laterally. So again, with the same tumble glass color, I put it onto my glass surface, add some water, and then pick it up with a brush and have tiny little splatters. Here are all the cards I've created here. No coloring, just a nice and clean card. I hope you like that as well. And then I've done a various versions of the assembly here. Here I've done the landscape with colored card and some ink blending at the top. Here I've done the ink blending at the bottom with some emboss resist technique and added that string of lights at the top which is from the small die of the month. And here I've got embossing, dry embossing, heat embossing as well as stenciling with a glimmer paste and mirror stamping. And I've done two versions of this, one with a slightly darker background just to show you the contrast that a darker background can give you. I do love how all of these cards turned out and I hope you do too. And I'd really like to hear from you in the comments below what you think of these cards. All the products I've used are listed in the description below for your ease of reference. And here are all the close-up pictures of the cards that I've created. Happy crafting when you get your Spellbinders Club kits and go to town with your creations. Thank you so much for stopping by and I'll catch you at my next video. Do take care.